Hello, hello, I'm Tanya Dalton, owner of Inkwell Press and host of Productivity Paradox. Today I want to talk about how to stop procrastinating and how to get motivated. I've got five ways to stop procrastination today. And I have a free download that I'm going to share with you at the end of this video to make getting motivated even easier. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and don't forget to click the bell. Before we can understand how to stop procrastinating, I think it's really important to understand why. So really quickly, I want to go through a couple of reasons why we procrastinate. Fear of failure. We all fear failure. No one enjoys failing. But we have to understand that failure is simply part of the process and it's a great way for us to learn. So we have to walk away from that fear. It might be that you don't feel like you know what you're doing. I'm going to let you in on a little secret. No one knows what they're doing. Even the people online, even people on social media that maybe you look up to, who you think have it all together, they have moments of doubts. They have moments where they feel like they don't know what they're doing. No one knows what they're doing all the time. Maybe you feel like the task is boring or unpleasant, or you simply just don't want to do it. Listen, whoever came up with that term, love what you do and you'll never work a day in your life, was a liar. I love my job and every morning I wake up excited to go to, wait a minute, that's not true. I love what I do, but I still wake up some mornings feeling stressed or feeling tired or feeling like I don't want to go to work. We all have tasks to deal with that maybe are a little bit unpleasant. Or it might be that you're feeling overwhelmed. And if you've listened to me for any length of time, you know I say overwhelm isn't having too much to do, it's not knowing where to start. And so I think that's a really big key here. If we can start figuring out where to start, the smallest thing to start moving forward, we can overcome this obstacle. But the problem with procrastination is it feeds into these negative voices we hear in our heads, our inner critic, which tells us that we don't have choices, that we don't know what we're doing. And it really feeds into that perfection and imposter syndrome that many of us feel. So I want to talk about five ways that you can stop procrastinating. The first way is to make a meaningful reward. The excuse we use is, I don't know why I have to do this. And what you have to keep in mind is we all experience present bias. And what that means is short-term effort dominates the long-term benefits. That's why it's so much easier to flip on the TV sit down and binge in front of Netflix than it is to get started with our projects. Because that short-term effort of turning on the TV is so much easier. So we need to reward our brain. We need our brain to say, this is a great task and I want to keep working on it. So set a reward for yourself when you're working on a project. And make sure to set the reward so it ties to your goal. Let's say, for example, your goal is to start your own business. Maybe you reward yourself with a brand new business book. Or if it's exercising, maybe you reward yourself by getting to listen to your favorite podcast every time you go running. Think about what rewards you could tie in to the projects or the tasks you're really wanting to do but keep procrastinating on. The second way to stop procrastinating is to start small. Many times we use the excuse of, I don't think I can do this, or I don't know where to begin. So start by breaking your task or your project down into bite-sized pieces. You've probably heard that saying, eating the elephant. How do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time? It's the same thing here. Recognize that it's not easy to tackle a big task or a big project. So if you make it into tiny little projects within that project, it's so much easier to get started. And that's the momentum we need. If we start moving forward, it's so much easier to continue working. One of the things that I recommend is setting an alarm for yourself to work for five minutes. Five minutes seems really easy, doesn't it? But here's what happens. After you start working for five minutes, you think to yourself, well, I've already started, I've already pulled everything out, I might as well keep going. Or if after five minutes you say it's just not working, it's okay to take a break and then come back and try five minutes once again later on. Starting small is the key 
to stopping procrastination. The third way to stop procrastination is to set an intention. The excuses we use include, I don't have time, or I have too much other stuff to work on. So here's what you need to do. Decide before you start how long you want to work on this project. If you decide before you get started, it's so much easier because decision fatigue hasn't begun to set in. So you block off your time and you set a stop goal for yourself. Okay, I'm going to stop after I've written four pages on my book. And then when you hit that stopping point, stop and then reward yourself for doing a great job. And here's a little trick I think is really helpful. Leave a little water in the well. Ernest Hemingway always made sure to leave a little water in the well. He would write down what he wanted to work on next and that gave him a springboard to keep moving forward. So I recommend doing this as well. When you've been working on a project, then you hit that stop goal. Make yourself a quick little note. You can write it on a post-it note or put it in your phone. Write yourself a note of what you want to work on next and that will make it even easier the next time you want to get started. The fourth way to stop procrastinating is to change your point of view. The excuse that we use a lot of times is, I simply don't want to do this. And I understand that. There's always going to be tasks that we don't love. Recognize that it's okay to see that a task is boring, that it's difficult, or that it's frustrating. And then I want you to turn that on its head, and I want you to start to look at it as a challenge. Challenge yourself with a time limit. I'm going to run for 15 minutes. Or one of the things I like to do when I go running, because I'm not a very good runner, is I like to look at how far I can go. I want to challenge myself to make it to the stop sign. I want to challenge myself to go beyond that and get to the green car, and so on. You could challenge yourself with bags to donate if you're wanting to clean out your closet, or words to write if you're working on blog posts. It's really up to you. But if you start to see yourself more in control of the situation, you're going to feel a little more excited about getting started. And an easy way to do that is by challenging yourself. And the fifth way to stop procrastinating is to ask yourself, why? Many times we say to ourselves, this isn't really that important, even when it is. So if you stop and take a minute to really understand how the task or how the project moves you forward to your bigger goals, to your mission or your vision of where you want to be, it can make it so much easier to get started. It's interesting that the Marines have now changed how they're training their new recruits. New recruits are trained to now get in there and question why they're doing this in the first place. And that makes it so much easier when they're stuck in the mud or stuck in the rain to keep pushing on and to keep moving forward. And that works for us as well. When you start strengthening that internal locus of control in yourself by realizing that these are choices you are making because they're important to you, it makes the task so much easier. So I want you to ask yourself, what are the excuses that you use when you procrastinate? And I'd love for you to comment below and share those with me. How do we motivate ourselves? I think that's really what we want to know because it's not enough to stop procrastinating we really want to be excited about the work that we're working on. We want to be excited about these tasks and these projects we have, right? So I think what's important is to stop and take a deep breath. When you find yourself procrastinating or feeling the urge to procrastinate, think about what are the excuses you're using? What are the stories you're telling yourself in your head that's telling you that it's okay to put this task off? When you start to really understand the excuses you're using, you can begin to unlock the best way to really start fighting this procrastination from ever even starting. But here's one of the things I think is most essential. Set a goal for yourself. When you really can't see where you're going and tie it to your why, it makes it so much easier to feel motivated. You get excited about goals because it's leading us to the life that we really want to live, right? So set a goal for yourself and when you do that, Write out why you're doing it. But it's not enough to set a goal. You really need to know how you're going to get there. Think of it this way. If you're on one side of a bank and your goal is to cross to the other side, how do you get there? Do you just jump into the water, maybe getting washed away? Or do you make a plan for yourself? Do you think, okay, I can jump to this rock here and then that rock over there and then this rock and make your way across? 
That's the way to do it. Each of those little rocks is a little mini milestone, and it's so much easier to get motivated for smaller goals that are easier to attain. So take your big goals, take your big projects, and break them down. Make them easier for you. And to make this even easier for you, I've got a download. Just go to inkwellpress.com slash take action to grab your free download. Once you've broken down a big project or a task, it's so much easier to get started. But here's what I want you to think about. I want you to remember to forgive yourself. It's okay if you have procrastinated in the past. It's okay if you haven't accomplished your goals. When we start all this negative self-talk, it feeds into our need to keep procrastinating. It's a vicious cycle. And scientists have actually found that when you stop this negative self-talk, your procrastination, dissipates and your motivation increases. So let's really be mindful of how we're talking to ourselves. I think it's so important that we treat ourselves with a little bit of kindness. We're not so good at doing that. If you'd like to learn more about procrastination, I have a full podcast episode all about procrastination. It's episode 74. I also have several blog posts. You can read a little bit more about those. I'll make sure to include those links there at the bottom. In the meantime, Make sure to subscribe by clicking the button. Don't forget to hit the bell so you can be notified when I go live. All right, I'll have a new video next Tuesday.